Hey guys, welcome to this video in which I'm going to be going through the process I used when creating the Grimator speed painting that uh, should be linked on the screen right now. It'll also be at the end and probably in the description as well. Also linked on the screen at the moment is a link to Draw With Jazz's video in which he announced this competition that uh, this painting was made for. The competition runs until the 24th of this month, I believe that's the deadline, so if you want to check out that video and maybe enter it yourself, there are some pretty cool prizes, but mostly the, it's a good excuse to flex your imagination and uh, test your own artistic skills. So both of those videos will be linked in the description below. So first up, I'm going to go through how I came up with the design concept for the Grimator. Um, I do all of my desi initial design stages in uh, traditional media, particularly graphite, in my sketchbook. I personally find um, creating sketch is in graphite much easier than doing it in Photoshop. I can do it in Photoshop, I just prefer to do it um, in a sketch pad. It just feels more natural, maybe because that's the way I started. Um, so these were just a few ideas where I threw down just concepts and stuff. Obviously Grimator brings to mind the idea of Minotaur, so I started off with fairly generic looking sort of uh, half beast, half uh, bowl kind of feeling thing. You know, it's sort of your classic Minotaur shape. Um, part of the competition was that uh, it should have scales. I wondered about bringing in a more of a reptilian kind of feel to it. I also did this sort of more humanoid idea um, just to check, go more into the demon side of things. Um, wasn't really happy with this guy. Uh, I think partly because I've very recently done a painting of Killer Croc. So it felt too much like something I'd done very recently. Um, so I was leaning more towards this guy. I did try out another couple of lizards, but as you can see, I didn't really get very far with them. I wasn't enjoying them. Sort of a chameleon guy and a snaky guy. Um, but they, I, I preferred these three, in particular this one, and some elements of this guy. I liked the way that the scales and stuff were coming through the skin. So I brought them over to this guy. Um, so the that it's sort of a mix between the two. There's sort of a reptilian kind of feel to his face, whilst keeping that um, bull uh, minotaur look, and kind of wanted him to feel a bit more demonic as well. Pretty boring pose, I decided. So definitely not the final design. So I decided to have a second go at him, and I came up with this guy, which is pretty much the final idea. You can see the list of bits that we had to include there. Um, so this is the final sketch, the final design idea. Uh, so it's the same as this guy, if you bring in both you can see they're basically the same guy, it's just this guy's facing the other way, mouth open, bit of a snarl going on. Um, and then comes this bit. Uh, <laughs> this bit here, the, the what he is holding here, the small child. Um, because he had to be two and a half meters high, I realized if I had him leaning down like this and looking at a full-size adult, he was probably going to end up standing maybe four or five meters high, so I needed to scale him back a bit. So I figured if I had made him hold a child, he'd still appear to be massive, but in actuality it would bring his size down to more about the two and a half meter mark. So that was kind of why I went with the child having her soul eaten. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is where the d design came from through a process of just throwing down ideas until I came up with something that I liked and refining the idea into a final concept design. And this is what we're uh, going to take over into Photoshop right now. So here we are in Photoshop, and this is pretty much as Photoshop would be if you opened a new uh, new project. Um, first thing I tend to do is get rid of the white background because uh, it's make having a white background makes it very difficult to see uh, comparisons between values. So um, differences between light and dark. If it's all white, black is very black, whereas white you can't see. Whereas where if it's a midtone like this, you kind of get a good idea by either way. 
Um, and then basically I will go through and I will rough out the design that I've just drawn and as you can see it is super sketchy. It's all over the place, there's construction, there's, well I'd say there's construction lines but you can't really tell. Um, and yeah this is where it all starts. <laughs> Uh, once I've got this guy, um, I've gone ahead and kind of divided everything up into uh, phases. Um, so once I've got the rough design in, it's kind of crazy to look back at it, um, I will uh, go through and I will tidy it up, sort of do an, an inking on the uh, sketch, so it kind of makes a bit more sense. Then what I'm going to be doing is going with the local colours. So I'm going to be filling in behind the sketch, behind this um, uh, the line work, with the colours that things would be if they weren't lit and they weren't in shadows. So um, they were being lit almost by a universal lighting, like from every direction, so those equal colour all the way around. Um, and to do that I've split up the foreground, the midground, the mid kind of fo main focus I guess and the background into separate folders so if we go into here bump, 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 uh, first of all we're going to do the local colours which looks something like that. So yeah now that we have our local colours in place just the very base tones we're going to go through and do a shadow pass so we're going to take the lighting which is coming from this direction here coming out of the door and we're having the light hitting everything on this side so we're going to fill in all on the other side with uh, shadow uh, so that's the shadow for the background that's the shadow for the midground and that's the shadow for the foreground so Already you can kind of see how the forms are shaping, it's making everything feel that little bit more 3D. Uh, the next few steps will help emphasize that, so if I go ahead and collapse those layers, we're now going to be painting in front of the uh, line work, so all the line work there, um, with highlight layer. So this is going to be the highlight for the background. And basically any edges where the light is hitting, anything that I feel needs a highlight is going to be lightened up just a little bit, just to add a little bit of light bouncing off the forms. And then again on the foreground as well. Um, it is then a case of just kind of switching back and forwards between the two, the light areas and the dark areas, and refining them. So go back through and do a um, shadow pass so this is a even deeper shadow so where it's got a little bit less light might be a bit darker so once again like this so we've got a secondary bout of shadow that again is popping out that little bit more and then a final highlight there let's do that one as well so that's the foreground and then we're just going to go back and do another highlight layer on top of everything so you can see the light where it's bouncing off the brightest just giving it some real hot spots there as well on one, this one as well on the foreground so we'll collapse them all back down so at this point we have basically all of our colors and uh, all of our values in place we're pretty happy with how everything is set out so it's time to start uh, really refining some of these areas and rendering out the final piece um, so if we turn on uh, phase two uh, basically what I've gotten done here is to collapse all of that information on those uh, lower levels down into a single file so you can see if I hide phase one that's all of the background is on one layer all the midpoint is on another and all the do 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 where are we foreground there we go is on a third layer so what I then go through and do, and it's probably better I start with the mid level, is I go through and do a touch up on it. So if we zoom in um, here, you can see everything is pretty messy. I've actually turned off the uh, reference at this point. So this is a copy that I put at the top just for future reference as well. Um, so I've actually gone ahead, I've turned off the line work at this point. And we're going to go through and we're going to start refining out these e edges and kind of tidying everything up. 
Uh, so you can see if when I turn this on, this touch up, no, this touch up, this level, yeah, you can see everything changes quite dramatically. Um, all the forms start to take shape uh, a little bit better. Everything's blended together much, much smoother. Um, and we go ahead, we do that background, and we do it a little bit in the foreground as well, but not a huge amount. If I zoom back out, you can see I haven't done a whole bunch to the foreground at all. Um, yeah, I will explain why that is in a little second or two. Um, we then have a second dark level, so I'm going ahead and I'm darkening everything up. I felt it was a little bit too light in the background there. Uh, and then I added in a little bit extra light coming through the door just to really make it glow. We then move on to having a second light source, something which really helps a, a 3D form kind of take shape is to have a second light source. So you can see basically I've darkened up the curtains there a bit, but I've allowed light to be passing through them. So there's light hitting his back and his, uh, his arm there, and also on his face and a little bit on his hand as well. So that's just a little bit of bounced reflecting light or secondary light coming in from the curtains. Um, and that second light obviously also is going to hit some of the stuff on the bed. I've also darkened everything up in there as well. And the final one is this, which is ah, it's just where I've gone through and I've just brought in a little bit of yellow coming through the door. Um, should have had more yellow around here, but I went ahead and I fixed that uh, a little bit later. So that is pretty much uh, the next phase complete. The one other thing that I did do is created a, another layer here, and uh, this is just set to color burn with a very sort of creamy color over the top, and I've just taken out the parts which I wanted, so I've got a warmer feeling over here and a much cooler feeling over here. And we go on to phase three. Now this is the phase which really starts to bring everything together. At this point, it's pretty close to the final thing. And um, to be honest, I could turn on and off this top layer when you were zoomed out here and you really wouldn't notice a huge amount of difference. It just adds a lot of detail. I'm going to go through and do a photo pass, photo texture pass. I'm going to take some photos mostly of elephant skin and alligator skin. I think it was alligator skin. Um, and layer them in and warp them around to fit the forms. Uh, and it ends up looking something like that. Uh, so if I zoom in, you can see all this is photo texture of elephant skin. And it's just laid in over the top. One of the things that this does to the image, other than bringing in that detail, is it flattens everything out. You see the colors become a lot more desaturated. Uh, it's not as vibrant as it was. I know it's all black, but you can kind of tell if you look at the lighter areas. Everything just gets a little bit duller. Once I've got a photo texture layer sorted, and I'm happy with that, where everything is, uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do a detail pass over the top of it where I'm basically um, picking up where the photos leave off and kind of merging it uh, more with the, um, the actual painting underneath. So that's basically what happens between these two layers. You can see I've gone through and just highlighted scales and such where they would be being hit with this light um, brought the shadow around to the side and really darkened up the areas between them as well so that they really stand out and it gives everything a nice shine and brings back some of the color another thing that I did on this point at this point was to go through all the hair on uh, the little girl I've got a whole bunch of hair brushes uh, for different fur and things um, which I got from the creatureartteacher.com I think it's .com uh, Aaron Blaze who is a phenomenal concept artist uh, has them in his shop they're brilliant brushes I definitely recommend uh, anybody who wants to do hair to check them out because yeah they do a really really nice job um, so I just went through and I did the hair on the little girl I also did 
um, used another one of the brushes for some of the hair on the bear as well. Uh, much the same uh, in the foreground. I just went through and I just did a little bit of hair on the bear. Not a whole bunch, like I said, I didn't want to detail over detail this area and I will explain why that is. I promise, coming up very shortly. So yeah, just a bit of detail on the bear there. So again, also on this uh, detail layer, what I have is the light or the, the soul being taken from the girl coming out, just a little bit of a hazy kind of smoky pattern going on in here. I've also got um, the light coming through the door. I brightened it right up behind the horn so you can see it's really, really quite bright out there. Um, and it adds quite a lot to the picture, I think. So that is basically that. So now we're moving on to the very final phase, which is basically just presentation and adding a little bit more atmosphere into the piece. Um, so I'm going to collapse everything back down into their individual layers, the foreground, the midground, and the background, and I'm going to blur the background a little bit, and I'm going to blur the foreground a little bit more. So you end up with something which looks a bit like that. Um, this is why I wasn't too, going to be too worried about the detailing uh, in this area. I didn't bring it up as high as in here. There would have been no point. And the same kind of with the background as well. So everything was left very undetailed because I knew I was going to come through and do this. So once I've got that all sorted, I'm going to add a little bit of atmosphere to it. Uh, and to do that, all I've done is I've gone through with a pen brush and I've put little dots, some uh, large with high opacity and some smaller, very um, bright dots as well. And it just adds like atmosphere. You've got dust hanging in the air. Some of it's in focus, some of it's not. And uh, yeah, I think it really adds something to the overall thing. I've then created a, uh, what I've heard people refer to as a grime layer. Something that I really, really like um, is to, I've got this, uh, dirty paper which I basically use for everything if I turn it on and go normal you can see it's just a piece of very dirty paper which I've then taken some out with a, a razor tool in the areas of particular detail that I wanted to draw attention to and then I just turn it to a multiply layer Donk. and it I, I really like what it does personally. It just adds a little bit of hidden texture to it, tones everything right into a nice warm kind of area. Yeah, I, I really like that. Um, so next we have, there's a little bit of extra dark at the top there. So finally we have uh, the last two layers, one which is just a color burn layer just to really hot up some of this area. And then we've got signature sign your fi uh, final piece so that is in a nutshell basically how i went through and created this image um just talking through the layers there so you can see kind of my thought process i guess as i'm going through it if there's any parts of it that you'd like me to go over in more detail maybe or kind of actually see me working on real time uh, let me know in the comments and with any questions at all uh, as well as any suggestions you have for future speed paintings or ideas for creature design, anything really. Just let me know, give me an idea down in the in the comments of the sorts of things that you'd like to see me paint. Um, yeah, so that is going to be it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will catch you next time.